Hey guys, HW. I'm in Cumberland Street, which is a street between the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the rocks. Decided to come across the bridge today, do a quick walk through the city midweek. It's a Wednesday lunchtime. Temperature supposed to get up to 20 degrees Celsius later on just after lunch which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit I believe the winds from the east at six kilometers an hour so let's get up and start walking I've, I've in in my mind I'm thinking I'm gonna walk down I think partly through the rocks but not not that much and then I'm heading towards I'm, I try to find a new nectar joint on the map today before I came out here and I think I've found one which I'm going to show you which is a bit bit unusual and then after that we'll probably have a little skirt down Pitt Street maybe through the Hunter Exchange and then back over to George Street and then probably call it quits after that so it's probably we only going to be a short one today but we'll see how we go Being close to the rocks and accommodation and being on a street like York Street, which is a street that you can traverse the city. Probably going to see a few tourists along the way. Just notice I still got my headphones in. Let me get rid of those. So I tell you what, this morning uh, I got off the train at North Sydney and the place was absolutely teeming with people. I don't know what's going on today, I don't know. I always thought Thursday was the busiest um, work day since we all started heading back to work. Obviously there'll be a bit of tourist action around being the school holidays. being the school holidays but um, still there was a lot of workers around I noticed the rocks tapanyaki never been there Oh my god, all the times I've walked past here, I've never noticed that pub on the corner. The Hearts pub. I must be blind. I mean, I've walked past here countless times. I've never paid any attention to there being a hotel on the corner there. So yeah, I was going to say before that, when I first turned into Essex Street here, my head almost got blown off by the wind. I'm pretty sure just before I said it was only six kilometers an hour. So, must definitely be gusting up. Or unless it's just a bit of a wind tunnel, this street. Actually, let's get out onto Essex Street just here and do a little bit of a film upwards. I'm just gonna capture that Salesforce tower there for my buddy. as well capture this hotel here as well the the Siebel Key West let's get up the top pretty sure I stayed um, stayed in the Key West one night paid a fair amount of dollars because it was to for a whole suite and uh, it was pretty much when I got up in the morning, couldn't get out of there fast enough. It had nothing to do with the place being bad or anything. It was just that I was in a hurry. Had somewhere to go. And 
is the Four Seasons Hotel. A few cars getting around. Try not to get run over by that van. Now I'm pretty sure this coffee shop when I look to is behind here, it was behind 200 George Street. So I only know the address and what it looks like, so let's see if we can find it. the camera down to the rocks just quickly a lot of punters coming out of the rocks down there oh no look at this this is where I wanted to go it's packed this is where I wanted to go it's called the Dutch smuggler I think yeah, the Dutch smuggler. And they've got it built into the, it's almost built into the staircase here. Let's have a look. Yeah, they've got it built into the staircase there. At the base of the South Force Tower. Oh, there's a few eateries down here. You know this little eatery food court place existed so yeah so I decided I'm going to try this joint the Dutch smuggler apparently they've got all these famous toasties that they make so they make toasted sandwiches and I was reading one of the ones that they do is a a, uh, a garlic noodle toasty and the garlic noodles themselves are like famous in LA in Beverly Hills so um, let's get. I think I might have a piccolo because I've already had a flat white today. So let's go and order a piccolo. Hey, can I just get a small takeaway? I'm oh, sorry, I shouldn't say small. Can I get a piccolo. <laughs> I was thinking I was having a flat white, but. Yeah, just so you're ready. Thanks. get it to work eventually. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Alright, we've ordered the delicious piccolo. Just touch this wall here so that it doesn't have paint on it. We're just looking up at the Salesforce Tower here. Look, they've got the whiz bang waterfall motif in their foyer i think that's pretty indicative of all of their foyers around the world in their in their office buildings i've seen the one in san francisco is very similar to this with the fancy uh screen in the foyer showing different scenes i wonder after everything that happened i wonder why they bothered going ahead with this building i just wonder how oh thank you thanks very much cheers There's my delicious piccolo. There's the Dutch smuggler over there. Where are we going to go?
See if I can find somewhere up here to put down my nectar for a second. Let's go back to the South Source Tower again. Camera down for a little while. Face it down past the four seasons, down towards the rocks. See what we capture. But yeah, what I was gonna say is, I wonder why Southwest bothered ahead, going ahead with that building after everything that happened. I dare say the occupancy rate in that building is probably not very high. And most people I speak to are Saying they go into their office and there's no one in there. So I don't know when we're going to stop kidding ourselves that people are heading back to the office. I don't think there's many people interested at all. I don't know about what you guys think, but I'd be happy for a um, everyone to... As anyone that can, obviously there's some people in some industries that can't work from home, but anyone that can work from home or can work from home and then maybe have like a, um, have like a monthly get together, like a monthly offsite where you all get together and brainstorm and stuff, if that's what's required. And then other than that, like what's stopping you from being able to do your work from home? But that's my little rant for the day anyway. I'll finish off this piccolo. Oh, I should say also, um, I'd like to thank Jim. Jim, Rooster Jim, for uh, shouting me this nectar today. Uh, he, sh he shouted me a handful of nectars. I really appreciate that. Um, I must admit, I get a bit embarrassed when I... Uh, get given uh, or people buy me coffees through that buy me a coffee thing I you know I only put it there because there's a few people when I first started that said oh I can't you know I can't throw you a, some coin because you don't have enough enough subscribers on YouTube and so I looked around to see if I could find something so that there was something there if you wanted to throw something in the hat so that's why I have it but I've been thinking lately I might I might get rid of it because I feel like a bit of a I feel like a bit of a scab having it up there. So I'll have to keep monitoring it and see see how I go. But hopefully I um, build up enough subscribers that I can just get let YouTube take care of it. Still a fair bit of construction work going on around here. Almost finished this piccolo. We'll get walking soon. I promise. All right, we're done. Yeah, so that was the uh, the Dutch smugglers at the bottom of your uh, bottom of the staircase over there, and uh, the pickle I just had. It was nice. I rate it. Probably one of the best piccolos I've had for ages. I had a good, good, strong coffee taste, and it wasn't um, wasn't bitter at all, like you usually get with piccolos. So apart from living in Melbourne for a couple of years back in the day, I've lived pretty much my whole life in Sydney. And I must say, I never get used to seeing the uh, light rail or the trams traveling up and down the streets. I just can't get used to it. 
this feel this feels bizarre i feel like i'm in like a european city or a I feel like i'm in uh, melbourne or something but they've been around for a while now so i should be used to it I suppose as your population increases you just get more and more of those sort of transport options. You know, I've, I've showcased this site before. This is where Goldfields House used to be. I don't know whether it's a new Goldfields House that's springing up or whether it's something, something new. Not sure. Yeah, it actually tells us here so it's going to be what's called one circular key and it's going to be all residential three and four bedroom units there you go Let's sneak past the uh, the ship in. I'm gonna keep away from that building site. Let's sneak down the uh, laneway here. Yeah, let's sneak down the laneway. Sneak down Reby Place. We've been down here before. You'll see me walk through this in one of my other videos. Um, Sydney's hidden laneways and alleyways. So look out for that video if you haven't seen it. View of that building too. Oh, passing by the gateway. It's a bit of a food court in there, I believe. Yep. Last time I was in there, I remember I had a chicken schnitzel burger, or what you Americans like to call chicken sandwich. I'm really tempted to walk through Macquarie Place there and uh, up the Tank Stream Way and then up Abercrombie Lane again, but I've done that too often, so I'm gonna avoid it. One thing I noticed the other day when I was in this park was they've actually, on this obelisk here, they've actually got some old distance markers for different places in Sydney. Let's see if I can focus in on it for you. So yeah, it shows back in the day the main roads that were about. Uh, Sydney to Bathurst, 137 miles. And I take that's over the, the old Great Western Highway. From Sydney to Windsor, 35 and a half miles. Uh, Parramatta, 15 and a half miles. Liverpool, 20 miles. And then there's a few others like South Head, North Head, 7 miles and 14 miles to Botany Bay. So, yeah. It's another thing I didn't notice until I was in the park the other day. 
don't know whether you can see, but in that gym in there, they've got a still photo of Mike Tyson up on the screen. Gym's called the locker room. Must be a bit of a bit of a boxing class in there. Damn, I'm gonna have to wait for the lights now, so let's just point the camera down Bridge Street while we wait. Here we go. Just passing by the old New South Wales Lands building. Got to head up Loftus Street. Showcase this building before as well. It's under renovation at the moment. Oh, look at that old picture. The old taxi cabs waiting outside that um, Macquarie place where, where we just looked at that obelisk. Oh, that's actually Bridge Street there. All the old taxis waiting there. Old view of the harbour. Ferry down there called the Kosciuszko. P&O liner, the Iberia in, in dock. Back in the day. Doesn't actually say what year it is. Oh no, 1972 that is. Oh, there you go. 1954, that's what the trams used to look like in Sydney. That's uh, Spring Street. It's got an advertisement there to for Pearl Island. Oh no, that's a fabrics place. Pearl Island Fabrics. I was about to say, must be advertising a holiday resort, but it's not. 1919, Victory Parade in Bridge Street. Have a look at that, 1919, the road's still dirt. No pavement. Wow, this is a much older one, 1902. Alfred Street Circular Quay, that's the main strip down at Circular Quay there, the ferry buildings there, the ferry terminals, see the old trams and even some horse and carriage in there, the rocks in the background. Alright, let's get down Bent Street. Street of Martin Place. And David Jones listed there. David Jones and Coy. Didn't know that. So David Jones used to have a partner. Another one of Bridge Street. Seen that before. There's a little bit of a look at the old building. Workmen have got their barriers set up. See the nice sandstone buildings built from. This is the Opera House under construction in 1968. 
there mostly completed by the looks of it even though it never really got completed Chatsworth house over here never paid attention to that building before it's a bit of a worry that these workmen back there are spraying water into the garbage truck as they empty the bin into it you know what that means that means there's bloody asbestos in it Oh, the winter garden what the hell is this is this a little arcade that I've never seen before yeah it is let's go and check it out Oh yeah, some little eateries up here as well. It's a fish bowl over there. Juice over here. Little deli over there. So just a little city food court called the Winter Garden. Definitely never been in there before. Another fairly old building there. See, just walking down these streets, <laughs> I'm finding new stuff all the time. So we're in, uh, just so you know, I think we're in O'Connell Street now. And then that other street that we just came out was Spring Street. About to head past the Radisson Hotel on the corner of Hunter Street and Pitt Street and then obviously O'Connell as well so it's a bit of a bit of a three-way Just looking over at the corner of Pitt and Hunter Street there where you see that yellow phone booth. That's where the first Matrix film, Matrix film ends. The Keanu Reeves gets off the phone and then zooms up into the air Superman style. But it was right there on that corner. Right, which way are we going to go? We're going to head up Pitt Street and then into the Hunter Street connection? Yeah. No, I'm going to go in the side entrance of the Hunter Street Connection because we haven't done that before. Right, just make it across.
We were looking between these two trucks here over at the Grand Hotel. A few punters drinking and having darts outside. See that? That's fairly unusual in Sydney to see that. To see a whole bunch of rubbish like that on the street. Very rare. I'm sure they'll be across soon to clean that up. Ah, uh, look, the Hunter Street connection's under construction. We can't go in there. Under renovation. I should have remembered that. Last time we came past, it was... They were already starting to close it up. I wanted to give you a bit of an arcade feel as we went back into the station, so maybe I'll walk down the road and come through that arcade into the station instead. That little golf cart rubbish cart there soon passed. Go down to this shopping centre down here and sneak into the train station that way. There's that batch coffee there on the corner. There's a few people sitting outside on the yes. chairs provided. Met Centre, that was the name I was looking for. So let's get through the Met Centre. So yeah, as opposed to other cities around the world, all the shops in these arcades are still open. I was watching a, a video the other day in San Francisco. Oh, actually a couple of videos. The first video I watched was um, one by a guy that I watched quite a bit um, named Jermaine Ellis in San Francisco. He does some great videos if you're interested in that city. And uh, he was walking through the Embarcadero and it was dead as a doornail. All the shops closed. And then I watched another one for a guy named Metal Leo and he pretty much copied the same video and walked through there as well and uh, yeah, it's just sad to see how, how quiet it is. But Sydney's the exception to the rule. So yeah, we're the same, we have a lot of people not coming into work anymore. But the, uh, the city's still reasonably busy. All these shops are still open. Just walking past Macca's, Mickey D's. A few punters lined up with their cheeseburgers and Big Macs. Oh, I've timed this perfectly, my train's in four minutes. Beautiful. So as we start to head towards the turnstiles to get into the station and get up on the North Shore line, Thanks for coming on the little midweek skirt this week. Thanks again to Jim for the nectars. I'll see you in the next video.
the video is over.